Welcome back to the shop. Today we're working on this old Craftsman tiller. Uh, this was originally one of those toe behind or pull behind um, garden tractor style tillers. Uh, this one actually hooked up to a Craftsman sleeve hitch that went on the back of a Craftsman lawn tractor. It was this whole kind of package thing that you used to be able to buy from Sears back in the day. But uh, obviously this one is used. I uh, picked it up off the marketplace. I uh, paid $300 for it, which, you know, is what it is, again. Uh, not the cheapest in the world, but definitely better than buying a new one, and this one's in pretty darn good shape, too. Um, eventually, my plan is to adapt this to a Category 0 three-point, and then it's going to go on the back of one of my white tractors back there. Um, it does run. It works. It's just fine as it is, but um, it's the middle of winter right now, and preventative maintenance is actually important, uh, despite what a lot of people think. So... Um, I'm just going to go through this, clean up the carb, change the oil in the gearbox and in the engine. Um, the engine runs strong, but it's you know, your typical, like, whatever these are, the L-head uh, style engines that, I mean, it's old and it's leaking everywhere. So um, I'm not going to go too in-depth with it and start changing out gaskets and stuff. I'm just going to change the fluids uh, and, like I said, go through the carb. I might put a new muffler on it, but I doubt it. Um, eventually, I, I mean, I don't think this thing's going to die anytime soon, but if it were, I would just um, take this engine off of here and probably pick up like a Predator or something like that, any sort of small 5 to 8 horse uh, horizontal shaft engine and just replace it because it's easy enough to do. Um, it's a lot better than trying to tear this engine apart and replace gaskets and parts and everything else, but um, I'd cross that bridge when I get to it, like I said. So I have the carb off of it already. Uh, the whole intake assembly comes off together. It's really easy to get off. Um, there's only two bolts or, well, they're, they're bolts, but they have Phillips heads on them uh, that bolts the intake manifold on right underneath the exhaust. Um, so you just pull those uh, bolts or screws out and then there's one um, nut that connects this bracket to the bottom of the air cleaner housing. Um, so you remove those three fasteners, disconnect the fuel line, and disconnect the throttle linkage, and you're good to go. You can remove the whole thing together, which is what I've already done. Let's go check that out. So like I was saying, two, uh, two bolts on the intake manifold, and then here is where that bracket connects to on the bottom of the air cleaner housing. This is a really, really simple carburetor. Um, to be honest with you, all carburetors are pretty simple until you start getting into um, carbs on like bigger vehicles, which even then, I mean, if you have a schematic, it's easy enough to take care of. Um, I know a lot of people always freak out about carburetors, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna take it apart and never be able to get it back together. And it's, it's really not that complicated. Um, I'll, I'll kind of just walk you through it here as I, as I do it, but... Um, you know, if you're looking to get into getting into doing this kind of stuff by yourself, it's really not that hard. Get yourself, you know, you don't even have to have a good set of tools. Cheap set of tools from Harbor Freight or anywhere online, Amazon, and, and you're good to go. So, um, with that, I will shut up and let's get going on this. All right, so I know you're kind of upside down there, but um, this is about the best camera angle I can get, so we're going to run with it. First thing I'm going to do for now is just pop off um, this first part of the intake manifold. I guess, yeah, I mean, really, this is kind of a, I don't know if you'd call it a two-piece intake manifold, um, but there's a piece before and after the carburetor, and the piece before the carburetor is what the air filter housing mounts to, and this is just bolted to the carb with two Phillips head screws. Nothing too complicated there. There's a small gasket in between there that I'm going to try and save. The goal here is to not replace any gaskets just because I don't want to buy a gasket set, but in an ideal world you would do that. I'm going to replace this air filter, probably not today because I don't have one here, um, but I'm going to take it apart, see what it is, and I will find one. 
Um, I'm pretty sure I have a manual for this um, online in the house, and this looks decent. Not good, but I'm definitely still gonna replace it, but anyway. Uh, I'm not gonna touch that for now. Now we'll put that back together. And this does have a fitting on it um, that has a hose that comes from the crankcase that goes into here. Um, I didn't look at it too closely, but I'm assuming that's like uh, your positive crankcase ventilation. So any fumes that build up in the crankcase get pushed out of that hose, come back into the intake manifold, and then get reburnt, go through the carburetor and back into the engine, get reburnt, um, just like your typical PCV system would work on. I guess any internal combustion engine, unless that's a vacuum line for something. But I no, that wouldn't make, that wouldn't make any sense to me. That's got to be like a PCV line. Um, and then just for ease, I'm gonna take off the other chunk of the manifold and just kind of isolate the carburetor by itself. It makes it makes it the easiest to work on. If you're new to this kind of stuff, it's obviously a good idea to take as many pictures as you possibly can just to remember how everything goes together, but um, that's something that I usually do on more uh, complex machines, but this one is such a simple little small engine that I guess there's really no point or no need, I guess, to take pictures of everything. There's really kind of only one way it can go back together. Now uh, watch, I say that and I won't be able to get it back together, but <laughs> it, uh, it really is pretty simple. And um, if you're looking to get into doing this kind of work for yourself or as a job or just to make some money on the side, if you know what you're doing, there's money to be made here. And just, I mean, more so if you live in a bigger city. I don't live in a very populated area. So everything that comes up for sale, everybody kind of wants an arm and a leg for it because I live among people that sort of do the same thing that I do. They find something cheap, they have the know-how to fix it and then they'll jack up the price and try and sell it to somebody that doesn't have the know-how to try and fix it. So, but if you live in like a larger populated area, you know, like a cities of 50,000 or more, there's always someone that has more money than time and they're looking to get rid of something they have that, you know, they let it sit over winter and the gas got bad and the car, you know, gummed up and to them it's not worth fixing and they're just going to set it by the side of the road and let somebody pick it up or you know, they'll list it on Facebook for a tenth of what it's actually worth. So, um, I guess my point is, you know, if you're looking for something to do, this is a good way to make a little extra money. And for me, it's pretty darn interesting. So anyway, back to it. Uh, this is a really simple carb. Um, you got your choke here, full choke, restricting airflow as much as possible to enrich in the air fuel mixture and then there's your open choke to let in your normal operating amount of air fuel um, just trying to go over what else there is here um, this is your throttle essentially again kind of sort of works the same way as the choke does it's just a butterfly valve um, all the way closed like that is going to be idle and as you open it up your RPMs will increase as you let in a greater volume of air fuel mixture. And then all you've got right here is an idle screw. Um, as you tighten this screw it just opens the throttle a little bit more. You know, right now it sits there, but if you tighten the screw, it could open it up to that point, and all it's going to do is increase your RPMs at idle. But it's probably fine right where it's at. Hard to say right now without it running. Um, and really, that's it. That's all there is here. Um, and this is just your fuel inlet, and I would have to imagine this is probably uh, some sort of mixture screw, but we'll find out when we open it up. And then down here is your fuel bowl. So inside of here, there's a float, um, and a needle, and a seat. 
that's essentially the same across all carburetors. Um, what happens is the fuel comes in, drains down into the bowl, um, the float does exactly as the name implies, it floats, so as this fills up with fuel, the float usually moves up, sometimes it moves down depending on how the carburetor is set up, but um, very rare. Uh, so as the float moves, regardless of which direction it moves, um, it's going to be connected to that needle which is going to then press up against the seat and essentially close off your fuel inlet valve, not allowing any more fuel into the carburetor bowl. So then as you run the engine and it sucks fuel out of the bowl, the float will drop back down, that needle valve will open and allow fuel to drain into the bowl, and then it just uh, you know repeats that process as you run the engine as you run the engine. Use up fuel, fuel comes in, fuel out. All right. So far, all I've needed to do this uh, was a variety of Phillips screwdrivers and a 7 16 wrench. And the bowl doesn't look too bad. Not a whole lot of sediment in there. The whole thing is really relatively clean. Um, so here's that float that I was talking about. Uh, this one is brass. Um, most of them are, well, I think it's brass. It might be some kind of alloy, but it definitely looks like brass to me. And it actually looks like, well, it's hard to say. It, it may have been soldered at one point, or brazed, I guess, would be the right term. But um, occasionally, more so with the older brass ones, these will get holes in them. Um, the newer plastic ones, that doesn't happen too much, but um, obviously if that happens, the float no longer floats. Um, so what will happen is that needle valve won't close and it'll just allow fuel to keep coming into the bowl and coming into the bowl. And then one of two things will happen or both will happen. Your carburetor will leak like crazy and you'll drip fuel everywhere or it will drain through the carb into your engine down past the piston rings and then fill your crankcase with gas. Um, that's a common, not a super common thing that happens, but um, if you don't notice that it happens, that's a great way to ruin an engine if you try to start it with a crankcase full of gas. Um, so far, there's only this one gasket here that I've encountered, the seal for the bowl, uh, other than the gaskets on the intake manifold. But, um, and then usually this float is held in, in place with some kind of a pin. I'll try and get a good, good shot of it there. Let's focus here. You can see there, the float is held in with a little pin, so you'll drive that out, the float will come off, um, and then you'll be able to remove the needle and then clean the needle in the seat. Um, sometimes these pins can only be removed in one direction or the other. Uh, typically, if that's the case, they'll have an arrow indicating which direction it has to be removed in. I'm fairly certain this one can come out either way. But before I do that, I'm just going to soak everything in WD-40 and let it sit for a while because it's all, all pretty well corroded. So let's do that real quick. Looks like there's a little... Now that, unfortunately, is probably going to have to be replaced. But I might be able to get by with one of my standard size O-rings. I don't even know if you can see this. Um, there is a little bit, some kind of a seal on the drain for the bowl, and it's it's gone. I mean, I was just holding it in my hand and it split apart there. So. That will have to get cleaned up, and then I think I'm just going to throw an O-ring on there because I don't, like I said, don't have a gasket uh, set for this. So, and, you know, usually it's a good idea to order the parts that you think you might need before you start doing something like this. Otherwise, you end up with, you know, a carburetor torn apart or an engine torn apart just sitting in your shop for a few weeks. So, 
always better to have it on hand to begin with, but I think I should be able to get by with an O-ring. Uh, this guy here, I am going to throw in a cup of oil for a couple hours and just kind of let it hopefully take in a little bit more oil and then, you know, I guess, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I guess that when, when you put rubber gaskets like this in a cup of oil, it usually, um, if they've been dried out, it can extend their life and you can kind of reuse them at least for a little while, maybe not forever, but um, so I'm going to do that. It's the same principle as like, I don't know if you've ever had an axe head or an axe that where the head was loose because the wood was all dried out. And then if you stick that in a bucket of water or a bucket of oil, the wood will absorb the oil and expand. Same thing happens with rubber. And if I had to guess, I haven't checked, but I would say, well, probably not. I was thinking the crankcase might be filled with oil because the gas tank was empty on the tiller and I had ran it, you know, a, a couple months ago when I first picked it up. I know there was gas in there. It may have not been a lot, but the you know, odds are that it didn't fill the crankcase with gas just because of the way this carb is set up. You know, it sits a lot lower than the intake does. So, I mean, it would have taken quite a bit of yeah, and it, you would have had to have gas, you know, fill this up and then, you know, you're, it's not going to push gas all the way up this intake and then into the engine. It's just, there's not enough fuel and pressure there to do that. So, um, it must have just been empty, but always something to watch for if you are working on a carburetor that is dirty. Just check your crankcase. Try and drive that pin out holding the um, float in place. See what happens. So I can make it a little bit of progress. It doesn't look like it matters the direction in which you drive this one. It's just pretty corroded, so it's hanging up on its way out. But there she goes. All right, float is out. So there you can see that right there right there that little silver square head looking thing there that's the needle and what's at the bottom of it is referred to as the seat and this one luckily has no well where are you there you are has no rubber on the end of it it's just a metal one which it's pretty common on smaller engines, on things like motorcycles, uh, they'll end up having like rubber tips on them. And sometimes those tips, like rubber does, just kind of dissolves and uh, that's where your carb issue comes in. But um, this one's metal on metal, so usually that's you know not gonna cause you any problems. So this should actually be pretty much good to go. But um, And then once you have a carb apart like this, the main thing to do is just take, whether it's you know a small set of carb cleaning needles or, um, a lot of times even just the pressure of a can of carb spray 
um, blowing in all of the ports. You just want to make sure that you have good flow through any little hole that's in here. There's, depending on the size and complexity of the carburetor, there's always some sort of like a labyrinth of passages in there where air and fuel combine and you know, magic happens and that's what makes your engine run. But if any of those passages are clogged up, um, that's going to be an issue. So you just want to make sure that they're all clear, um, not gummed up or anything like that, and that you have good flow through them. So uh, always best to do this, I think, in, in you know, a good ventilated space outside because I have bad lungs as it is and uh, the fumes from pretty much anything just set me off, so um, I always do it outside. Um, always a good idea to wear goggles and even a mask because you can get a lot of, you know, the, the passages and the, it just, you're, you're spraying a lot of like high pressure stuff so it can splash back, hit you in the face, get in your mouth, get in your eyes, so um, always good to protect yourself. So I'm gonna step outside, clean this out, and I will come back in and we'll put it back together. All right, so everything's clean. Got my new O-ring. Where is the camera? There it is. Focus. Got my new O-ring to seal the drain. Cleared out all of the passages in the carb, have good flow going everywhere. Um, there's really, like I said, there, I think there's like a total of two two circuits in this carb, so it's, it's not very complex. You've got your fuel in and your fuel out, essentially. Um, check one more. Yep, we're good. All right. So, sometimes the needles will actually ride in a groove on the float and it'll kind of be a, a piece together. You know, it'll, it'll be a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the two will be an assembly. In this case, the um, needle just drops right down into the hole where the seat's at and that just sits there. And then there's just a little finger on the float that rides on the top of the seat, so they're not actually connected or assembled in any way. Um, so the float's clean. Check to make sure that the float still floats. Um, put that in there. And then we have to uh, drive the pin back in place, and I'm just going to make sure that I have all of the corrosion off of it. Which it looks like it's pretty good. are in. So there you can kind of see how, see the little finger on the float there? How it pushes up against the needle. Not touching, touching, not touching, touching. So as the float drops, the needle will drop if I was holding this the right way. The needle would drop with the float, valve would open, fuel would come in, float would float, close, hit the needle, and close the valve. And to be honest, I think you can still buy these carbs. And it's just a little Tecumseh carb. Um, you can probably buy it. I haven't looked, but you know, it's odd. Sometimes you can pick up carburetors for certain certain things for like less than thirty bucks. But 
I don't know the case, but I'm, I'm sure you can still get this whole thing. It's probably closer to, I would imagine, somewhere in the neighborhood of 100, 120, maybe even 150 dollars. Um, but I'm sure it's still out there. So that's that. The bowl's all cleaned out. Got my gasket back in there. So we'll just set that in there like so. And actually, I think I'm going to do it this way. Make sure the gasket is all the way. There. Actually, I had to kind of stretch that around the lip on the carburetor to get it to fit, which is good. You can tell it's got a nice seal to it yet. And this does not have to be that tight, otherwise you'd end up probably crushing the bowl. All right, I'm just going to clean up the outside of the whole thing a little bit more. I'm sorry that's been so blurry. There, that's a little bit better. Um, oops, yeah, I'm just going to clean up the outside of it a little bit more. And then it will essentially be ready to go back together. I think I'm kind of cleaning my brush more than I am cleaning the carburetor right now. But it's alright. Good enough for a garden tiller. It's gonna run like she's brand new. I don't know if I'll get around to changing the oil in it today. Actually, you know what, I probably will. I didn't think I had any 30 weight um, motor oil here. But I forgot I just picked up two gallons of it because I'm going to change the hydraulic oil in the other white. And that calls for 30 weight detergent or non-detergent oil. So I just have to make sure that I actually picked up motor oil, which I think I did. Oh, well, we should be good. Should be good there. Spray some WD-40 in here because this is what I do. I'm going to go ahead and probably clean up uh, the rest of the intake, clean all the dirt and grime off of it. Nothing too exciting there, so I don't think I'm going to film any of it. But um, I will pick back up with you guys when I have it all reassembled, and maybe we'll check the oil and try and fire it up just for fun. All right, so surprisingly, the crankcase was overfulled. Over, overfulled. The crankcase was overfulled, um, and 
I don't think it's because gas was draining into it because the carb was stuck. Um, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know, it was just overfilled. But anyway, I'm going to change the oil real quick and then we'll fire it up for fun. Um, but let me quickly show you why I don't think the crankcase overfilled from gas um, draining down through the carburetor. So obviously here's the gas tank. You just saw where the carburetor was way down here. All right, then the intake comes up and into the combustion chamber. So the top of the intake and the bottom of the gas can are about level with each other right there. So the gas tank would have had to have been like all the way full for there to be enough pressure. And I still don't think there would be enough pressure um, to drain gas into the carb. And then it just, I don't, I just, I don't think in any circumstance that would happen with this setup. Um, but I guess who knows? All right. So anyway, uh, let's change the oil. So I went ahead and changed the oil in this. Uh, I went with a straight 30 weight. Uh, first, that was just a guess, but uh, now I do see there is a sticker on the air cleaner cover that says to use uh, SAE 30. Uh, if it's above 32 degrees and um, 5W20, if it's below 32 degrees, and I don't know who's gonna be tilling below freezing, but I guess they just felt the need to put that on there. Um, other than that, I just put a splash of fuel in it because uh, I'm not gonna be using it for that or for that long, or I'm not gonna be running it for that long and I won't be using it for another few months, so I didn't want a ton of uh, fuel just sitting in there, um, but it should be plenty to run it. The only thing that I haven't done is changed out the oil in the um, gearbox right there. And um, I don't know exactly what goes in there, so I'm gonna try and find a manual for this. I would imagine it's probably like an 80 or 90 weight, but I'm not 100% sure. It may be 30 weight as well. Um, but uh, let's try and fire it up and just see if the carb clean helped. Guess we'll go full choke right away. So I guess there is some kind of a fuel shutoff valve. Um, in this case, it's on the bottom of the carb. Uh, I thought it was just a drain, but I guess if you close it tight enough, it doesn't let fuel um, into the engine. So I had that closed. That's why it wasn't starting. Um, it just died. I'm not sure if that's because I didn't put a whole lot of fuel in it. Um, there should be enough in there to run it for a little bit longer than that. So uh, I'm going to try and fire it up again and see what happens.
Yeah, so she needs a new air filter. Probably change the plug out. Um, definitely needs a new muffler. That's probably one of the loudest things that I own. Granted, I am inside right now, but... Um, engage the tines. That works. I'll probably have to put a new belt on it this year. Otherwise, next time you see this thing, uh, it'll be... Um, well, I'll probably be fabricating the three-point mount for it. And if I don't film that, you'll see it on the back of the tractor putting in a garden. Alrighty, thanks for watching guys. See you later.